a 590. Hi everybody, Richard again here from Electric Classic Cars and on this week's episode it's the last time you're going to see this in the UK. We're here at Santa Pod and today the aim of the game is to do some full throttle tests and the aim of the game is not, what's the aim of the game not to do Tim? Do not break the car. Do not break the car today. So we're lining up here to uh, get started so join us in the car, we'll do a load of runs but mainly it's about data today, I want to see how much kilowatts this new setup with the Model 3 motors is pulling, let's get into it. Now one change that we've done, really really important change we've done since the last time you saw this car is the tyres. We have the official Pikes Peak tyres on for Bug Zapper, they are Michelin S5C Pluses, the tyre apparently to have at Pikes Peak. Thanks to Michelin, these are the stickiest, most aggressive tyre we can get. So I'm not going to do burnouts because I'm cheap and I want to keep just one set of tyres, so I'm not going to destroy these tyres, so you won't see any smoky burnouts, but I'm really interested to see if these can stick the power down on the track. For the past five, six weeks, I've been going to Alton Park, which is a track in the UK, every week doing track testing. Just getting the suspension set up and make sure it goes around the corners, etc. Now, unfortunately, because Tim's got a day job, we couldn't film any of that, but I got a lot of in-car footage, which uh, we're going to play now, obviously, as I'm talking, because we now have a V-Box. And thanks to V-Box for sending us that awesome bit of kit, and it's got a bit of logging in it as well. So we've got a bit of track footage to show you but the reason why we couldn't do an episode is because Tim has a day job <laughs> but it's a Saturday today we're at Santa Pod and I'm just about to do my first run of the day okay we are away so aim of the game here not to break it and to do a rolling start so I'm not going to do a big burnout or anything like that I just I'm gonna get the car moving and then go to full throttle. So here we go, back at Santa Pod again. good so we just have something like feathering back the throttle there it is just the controller wasn't happy at all there I no idea what was going on I, I was full throttle and it was just sluggish so I'll have to have a look at the logs whoa that's okay now it's woken up now too late now I'm on the track all right how are you getting on yeah, uh, that wasn't that wasn't very good. No. I don't know why. I'm just looking through the logs here now. I mean, I'm, I'm expecting it to be like oh, onto your bars would take it to miles sort of like acceleration, but it was like a little bit sluggish, go, going eventually sort of thing. But yeah, I don't know, a bit pants really. So I'm just looking through the logs here now when I was 100% um, percent throttle. And the max maximum we got to was around about 300 kilowatts. But mainly it was around about the 100, no, 200, 250. Well, so we're way off. You way should off. be getting what up to 400 kilowatts. 200, 450 maybe. Okay. So uh, I'm just trying to. It's hard to see on the iPad because a I haven't got my glasses on because I'm old, and uh, equally um, I can't quite see what the traction control slippage and stuff like that is doing because obviously if there's um, uh, not equal diameter front wheel and rear wheel, you've got to compensate for that. But I'm pretty sure, in fact I am sure, the, the front and rear tyres are the same diameter, so I don't think it's that. So at the moment, it's a mystery, but that was a rubbish run. Oh well, let's try it again. Yep. Um, next run I'm going to do, I think I'll try, try it in track mode. Alright, second run of the day. So this time I've got track mode on. So we'll see, this is the first time I've tried this feature, so 
we'll see what this is like. Not quite sure how it's going to work, but there's only one way to find out. So I've got it set to its 70% 70 70 bias to the rear wheels. So and stability I've switched off. So this will all be down to my right foot by the looks of it. better. I think it's a traction issue. Because now I'm doing what? Say 20 miles an hour? If I boot it. Oi! 20 miles an hour on, we're fine. Underneath that it's really struggling for traction. I think we can conclude from this. It's not built for drag racing, but it's definitely good coming out of a hairpin and then just booting it. Which is what, to be fair, that's what Pike's Peak's all about. It's coming out of a hairpin, 10 miles an hour, whatever, and then flooring it. Another corner, flooring it. It doesn't like going from zero miles an hour up to 10 miles an hour um, with a thro full throttle you just can't get the power down how was that then any better uh yes in short good still not amazing i mean i'm, I'm too used to big massive large tesla drive units in cars and this obviously is tesla model 3 performance but that definitely hooked up better just looking at the logs here now so 100 100 percent throttle we're hitting around about uh, 360 kilowatts. That's better. Uh, uh, yeah, um, with a, a pack as rigid as mine, I mean, we don't get much vaulted sag in this pack. A Tesla Model 3, for instance, would sag a full amps around about 90 volts. We're only sagging around about 25 volts. So in theory, this should be producing more power than a Model 3 performance because the volts just don't sag and obviously volts times amps is power. So it's still a little bit disappointing I was expecting it to be 400 kilowatts and over but yeah we're on the right track I mean we're getting more power out of it now so I think what I'll do now on uh, run number three is I'm going to take traction uh, not traction control I'm going to take track mode off and go back and just double check that um, just normal setup is the problem and we should just concentrate now on fine-tuning track mode. Okay, so third run of the day, I've turned track, uh, track mode off, turned track mode off because I want to verify was it just a fluke that it was better with track mode on or not, so this should be just a verification run that so track mode is better, so just lining up here now. That was worse. So, track mode is definitely better. That was uh, literally for the half of the run. It was just holding back, holding back. You know, delay, 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 and then about halfway up, it just said, "You know what? Yep, you're okay now. You can have full power." So, the question is, do we put it in track mode for Pike's Peak, or do we leave it in normal mode? Because I went to Alton Park 
on the Wednesday, just in normal mode, and it was actually fine. Coming out of hairpins, it was great. So is it just for hard acceleration on a drag strip? There's a little bit of front wheel slipping more than the rear wheel, which you'd expect, and, and the motors just don't like that being out of synchronization. So what you probably need to do is just dial back the wheel speed scaler to think that the, the front wheels, if you like, are slipping less than they are. But if I'm gonna do that, it's only good for um, drag strips. So yeah, I think I will leave it in normal mode. But I don't know. I'll tell you what I'll do now. I will be pouring over the logs when I get back just to see what's going on. Right, you ready to go? Yeah, I think so, mate. How, how, was, how was that then? Um, a confusing day, I'll put it that uh, mildly. So on Wednesday, today Saturday, and Wednesday I was at Alton Park, going around the track, happy as Larry. Car was just brilliant, I'm very happy with it. And I thought, I'll just go to this last run to the, uh, you know, uh, run what you brung session at the drag strip, do some full throttle. And it never really allowed me to have full power until I was halfway up the track, which is weird. Because when I was going through s slow hairpins at Alton Park and flooring it, no problem, I was away. So I'm really confused as to why does it like, you know, power after a slow hairpin at Alton Park, which is the most important thing because that's more like Pike's Peak but it doesn't like a drag strip. And I think it's the whole you know, uh, wheel rotation um, comparison that's going on between the front motor and the rear motor. It just feels like it's kind of like stumbling over itself, thinking, oh, oh no, no, it, they, I've got wheel spin, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna reel it back there. No, now you can have power. I think it's just a little bit of confusion going on. So, yeah, it's confusing, but I've got a load of log data to pour over uh, when I get home. But the most important thing is, it works on a track rather than a drag strip, which is what it's supposed to do. So, there you go. One of those confusing days to date him. How was it for you, mate? Wonderful. 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 Noisy for you. Yeah, isn't very it? too noisy. <laughs> right. So there we go. Got to get this back now in the workshop. Check all the nuts and bolts. Give it a good once over, and then get it prepped and ready to go in a container this week. So last time you'll see it in the UK, boys and girls. Next time, Pike's Peak. Pike's Peak, here we come.